Hi, Cassidy Olivier with the Province Newspaper here with political columnist Michael Smith. How are you doing, Mike? I'm good, Cassidy. Good. It's been about five weeks and we thought we were all done with the teachers, but they're back in the news. Mike, can you bring us up to speed with what's going on? Well, you know, we just went through the longest teacher strike in BC history and everybody was sick of it by the end of it, especially parents. You had kids in the school system. And when they got an, uh, a legislated or, or negotiated settlement, we all thought, you know, thank God it's over. Well, not quite over because the two sides are still going to be duking it out, the government versus the teachers union. This time it won't be on the picket line. This time it will be in front of a judge back in court as the fight over contract stripping, class size composition limits in British Columbia and, and the historic battle that's been waged between the BC Teachers Federation and the government goes back in front of a court starting this week. So not quite over yet. So it's a complicated case, and but basically in a nutshell, what are both sides arguing? All right, you have to flash back, Cassidy, all the way to 2002, back when you were just a kid. And back then, the NDP government, or the, the newly elected liberal government at the time, brought in a very notorious piece of legislation called Bill 28. And what that did was it stripped contract language out of the teacher's contract. These are limits for class size, class composition, which is essentially means the number of special needs kids in each class and the resources available to those special needs kids. That had all been written into the teacher's contract by the previous NDP government. The liberals came in and said, look, this stuff is unaffordable. We're gonna break that contract. We're gonna take those class size limits out of there. So to give you an, an example of, of what they did, under the NDP, uh, the class size limit for kindergarten was 20 kids. The Liberals said, no, we're gonna make it 22 kids. Uh, for grades one to three, under the NDP, it was 22 kids. The Liberals said, no, we're gonna make it 24 kids. So they essentially made teachers teach larger classes. They also, through that Bill 28 law, uh, stripped a bunch of uh, minimum staffing levels for certain specialist positions. For example, uh, librarians, school counselors, uh, English as a second language teachers. Those were a, a lot of positions were eliminated as a, as a result of union figures, about 1,400 teaching positions were eliminated as a result of that. The union sued the government for doing this, and they won a spectacular victory in court. And what we are seeing now is the appeal. This, this court case is now in the BC Court of Appeal, the highest court in British Columbia. This is the government appealing the teacher's victory in court. That's what's going on. So what might this mean for the current contract? Because I'm sure parents are thinking, you know, this is in the past. You touched on that yourself. Hey, we thought this was done. This is, what does the result uh, potentially, what kind of impact could it have on the current contract? There is a possibility that the current contract could be reopened because the, the contract that was settled between the teachers union and the government included a very unusual reopener clause. And essentially what that said was that once the dust, the dust settles in this court case and it's finally decided, that the two sides would have to go back to the bargaining table and to begin negotiating again some of these very crucial issues, class size, class composition. So even though we have a six-year deal here, this court case will hopefully be settled before that deal is over. Then they begin to negotiate again. So could we go back to the barricades again? Could the teachers go on strike again? Could the teachers lock, or could the government lock the teachers out again? It is theoretically possible. You'd figure that both sides would not want to subject the public to that again, and we hope it doesn't happen again, but it is possible that these, these two sides could start, you know, ripping, ripping each other's throats out all over again here. And just quickly, if it is upheld, if the, if the court again sides with the teachers, what kind of money are we potentially talking about here that the government will have to put back into education? This is the key reason why this has been such a big fight in court is because of the potential cost. If they had to restore that old class size language negotiated by the NDP, you'd have to shrink the number of classes, uh, the class size. That would require hiring more teachers. You'd have to have more classrooms, more classroom resources. Potentially, you'd have to rehire a bunch of librarians and school counselors and other specialist positions. That could cost a lot of money. How much could it cost? Well, there's obvious, as usual, they don't agree, the two sides. They, they fight it, they disagree and fight about everything. The government says it costs hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe over a billion dollars. Uh, the teachers' union says, no, it could be done for maybe just a couple hundred million bucks a year. 
But either way you slice it, it's still big money. And this is why this has been such a high stakes court fight. If the teachers win and a lot of this contract language is restored, it could cost taxpayers a lot of money. That's why the government's fighting it so hard. And just lastly, Mike, there is a suggestion that this is going to end up in the Supreme Court of Canada. What kind of timeline are we looking at here? Yeah, I think you can bet this will go all the way to the Supreme Court of, of the country because whoever, whichever side loses this, whether it's the teachers or the government, the losing side will almost certainly appeal. So this will go to the Supreme Court of Canada. So that means that it's, it's very difficult to predict how long this could take. It could be a few years, really, before this whole thing is settled uh, by the country's top court. So settle in probably doesn't mean, you know, we're going to be, the schools will be shut down again anytime soon. We're, we're looking at a years long process here, uh, but it will be a very interesting uh, court fight uh, with the uh, teachers union. They got good lawyers. Uh, they beat the government a couple of times on this thing. They're hoping to win again. Uh, the government's got their lawyers too. At the end of the day, has major ramifications for who sets policy on this stuff. Who gets to decide how big the classes are how many specialist teachers we have, and the cost to taxpayers. And it could take years for it to be settled eventually. Well, I expect we'll be talking about it again pretty soon, Mike. Thanks for your time. Let's leave it at that. Have a good day. Okay, Cassie, thank you.